Welcome to the NeuroStronger podcast, a podcast aimed to connect, inform, and inspire neurologically disabled children and their families with the latest research. This is Vishnu Kagalanu, and in this episode, we will focus on childhood neurodevelopmental disabilities and genetic disorders like the autism spectrum. I want to welcome Dr. Andrew Fanali, Assistant Professor in the Department of Neuroscience at UC San Diego School of Medicine. Dr. Hanawi completed his fellowship in Neurodevelopmental Disabilities and Residency in Neurology at UC San Diego School of Medicine. He earned his medical degree from the St. Louis University School of Medicine. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Hanawi. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Dr. Hanawi, what are some of the causes of, of developmental disorders like autism spectrum and intellectual disabilities? And could you also share with us what inspired you to focus on treating these conditions? Yeah, sure. I'll answer maybe the second question first. So I, uh, you know, I had a kind of a general interest in science and medical science. Um, and so I, that's kind of was my motivation for becoming a physician. Uh, I wanted to use that to help kind of individual people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, as opposed to sort of just doing maybe medical science, you know, kind of science in general and being more broad, but kind of focusing on like, you know, in care for individual people. So that was my inspiration in general to be a physician. Uh, for neurodevelopment, what led me to that is I, I have you know a brother who has autism, and so you know seeing his experience in childhood, adolescence, adulthood, uh, the challenges he faced, and difficulty in, uh, in uh, you know the strengths and the challenges was kind of my motivation and maybe working with that population. Uh, so that's how I got into that. Great. And, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, now getting into like your work as like an assistant professor in the Department of Neurosciences, like you teach medical students, residents and fellows about treating neurodevelopmental disorders. Like what's the most important lesson like you want them to remember when caring for children and adults with these conditions? Yeah, very good. So I, I do enjoy, you know, teaching is a big aspect of my uh, practice at the university. So uh, when they're specifically working with me in, uh, in that uh in that clinic where I'm seeing kids or adults with neurodevelopmental disabilities, you know, they're not going to become experts in that overnight uh, or just from a, a few days. So I try to emphasize a couple things. One is um, that there's no one size fits all. So that's true in medicine in general. You know, uh, diseases can look different, different people. The right thing for one person might not be the same. But I think especially in this in this population, what might be kind of the textbook answer for a treatment for a certain, say, behavior problem, medical problem in a kid with autism um, might not be the right thing for another uh, another child with autism because of whatever circumstance that they're in. And then the second thing is to really uh, you know hone that skill, which is useful for any doctor of really listening to these patients. They often can't speak for themselves uh, or have trouble uh, telling you what's going on. And so you know looking at certain signs, talking to family to try to make sure that you're listening to them, and not overlooking. Uh, you know, what might be a medical problem staring you in the face and then it goes on for years and nobody knows because that adult or child can't tell you it hurts here, you know, so that happens all the time. So those are kind of the two important lessons I usually try to uh, instill um, in learners. Yeah, I mean, those are um, totally fantastic. Just like, you know, keeping um, like that individual individual individuality of like each patient, you know, like there isn't like one size fits all for um, these conditions and you have to take like each patient, you know, as like who they are and treat them like an individual. I want to get a little bit more into like, what are some of the common causes of developmental disorders like autism spectrum and intellectual disabilities? Where do these stem from? Like, how, um, and what are they caused by? Yeah, great question. So um, that's also very, you know, can be, can be very broad. Uh, so taking something like autism or intellectual disability or even cerebral palsy, these are often, in a way, you can think of them as almost like a descriptor for a group of symptoms that can have many, many different causes, right? So there can be genetic factors. Um, uh, by genetic, that could be hereditary, or it could be just in that individual that they have changes in their genes that that cause that contribute to the risk of developing them. And there's probably also some environmental uh, causes and influences. Uh, for example. Uh, you know, you could be exposed to certain things uh, or develop inside, you know, when the woman's pregnant or, or shortly after birth, as, as the development is going on, you could be exposed to certain things that might increase or decrease your risk of developing these things. And that's a huge area of research, right? Um, 
So, so there's that kind of thing. There's also neurodevelopmental disabilities that are known to be from like a, like one specific cause. Like there's a single gene that causes you have a mutation in that gene, you get Rett syndrome or you get tuberous sclerosis or you have a uh, chromosomal anomaly and you get Down syndrome. So that's like a known, like kind of like single gene or a single cause. And then of course there's things that are more uh, multifactorial. So you have to take that into account, of course. Yeah. A hundred percent. And just getting into like a little bit more on like treatments or like techniques to help these kids. Like, what do you really see that is showing promise and like, how do different, like how do like these approaches like differ for each condition? Like what new treatments do you think are, are really like promising or like, you know, getting like getting you excited? Yeah. So I think that goes back to like what the cause is, right? So when you're looking at like treatment for autism, right? The autism has so many potential uh, influences that nuance, you know, what's going on, what causes it, uh, what factors change kind of the neurobiology and development, uh, then it's going to be hard to have a single, a single treatment that's going to be effective for everyone, right? That addresses the underlying cause. People are working on that, but the most, I think the most, um, you know, most research in something like autism is going to be symptomatic. So you're going to take some symptoms that are cause a difficulty and you're going to try to find uh, medicines or, or therapies that treat the symptoms. Um, for actual kind of disease modifying treatment, I think the most exciting thing is, um, kind of the, maybe the, the targeted gene therapies that are becoming more common. So for certain causes of develop, like sorry, an intellectual disability that's caused by certain metabolic, uh, anomaly or metabolic change, people are now treating that, you know, using targeted treatment to try to actually address the underlying cause. And then also, uh, there's certain diseases that are caused by, let's say, a single gene that uh, you can, you know, uh, uh, engineer a gene therapy for that might work or at least help. So, um, you know, the kind of the, uh, the flagship gene therapy that is, you know, the the big one would be like SMA. So uh, you might have heard of it, spinal muscular atrophy. So this is a neuromuscular disease that happens in children. Uh, and now and it's it's from a single gene. And now there's gene therapies that you can administer that completely change the trajectory of the kid's life, right? Um, so similarly now, uh, there are probably going to, in the next few years, be neurodevelopmental disabilities, epilepsy, epilepsy, stuff like that in the neural world that are going to be targets for gene therapy. And there's even companies here in local in San Diego, where I am, that um, identify like a specific, uh, like they take one specific a uh, patient, a child or whoever, that has a unique mutation that's causing a certain disease, and they'll make a gene therapy that's targeted to that just that person and their uh, disease-causing uh, mutation. And I have a colleague who had a kid like that, and she worked with that company, and they they were able to 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 uh, treat the kid with the gene therapy. So I think that's the exciting next uh, thing that's coming. Definitely. And now just getting into a little bit more of like the meat and potatoes of your work. Like you've helped so many young patients and their family basically navigate the transition from childhood and teenage years to adulthood while managing these conditions. Can you just give us some insight into what advice you typically share with these young people and their families and how to really just like help them get through um, this transition? Yeah, that's a great question. So I do see a lot of, um, you know, teens that, uh, you know, kids, teens, adults, uh, and then transitioning care in, into the adult land. I think there's a few, um, there's a few challenges that pop up uh, that I see kind of commonly in, in this population. So first is, um, and that's going to depend also on, you know, the child or the adult, and their environment and, and what exactly, you know, as far as what challenges they're going to face. But, um, one thing is navigating the medical system. So you're leaving, uh, say for something like autism, or especially say cerebral palsy, right? You're leaving a um, pediatric medical system, which of course is, there's going to be ups and downs there, but it, it's better designed at taking care of people with disabilities. Okay, uh, there's these big centers and there's these multidisciplinary clinics, and even just a regular pediatrician, they're going to have lots of they're going to be taking care of lots of people with uh, disabilities and it's kind of a more well-oiled machine and they're leaving that kind of at an arbitrary time which is when you become an adult and uh, and then they're going to have to transition and get care in the adult medical system which is not designed uh, well 
to help people with disabilities, especially kind of childhood type disabilities, neurodevelopmental disabilities, say. So that's one challenge. Um, you know, so I, I try to help people, you know, find a, a primary doc. Uh, you know, obviously they can see me as a neurologist if they have a neurological problem. Uh, but that that's often a, a stressful thing for uh, the patient or the family, right? So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, you know, the other big change is navigating kind of social uh, social resources. So, you know, you're usually leaving the school system and then you're having to transition out of the school system into life. And, and so then there's challenges that come up with that, you know, trying to find, uh, you know, are you going to go to college? Uh, do you want to undergo some kind of job training or, or find a job? Uh, and, you know, adult programs, uh, if you uh, need something like that. So that transition is often difficult where, again, you have this environment that, you know, again, it has its faults, but it, it, there's a, you know, ha knows what to do maybe with, with most kids who have certain disabilities. And then you're kind of like, you know, you know, out in the open, go figure it out. Uh, and so I try to help kind of navigate people to the right resources. So that's going to look different depending on what state you live in, but, uh, but that's one thing. And then I think the social transitions um, are a big one. So, you know, if you think about that age group, young adult, you know, um, you have siblings uh, moving away, getting married, having kids, going to college, and then you might not be doing that. You might be kind of left, you know, um, still at home with your parents. Uh, for as an example, like as just something I see sometimes in some of my patients. So that can be a challenge. Is is kind of there's all these life changes that are stressful. And they're all coming at once. Yeah. Uh, your parents are getting older, caregivers getting older, stuff like that. Um, and then there's medical challenges. So there's obviously some things that might cause a problem when you're a child that go away when you're an adult and just aren't a problem much anymore. Um, like you know, kind of behavior stuff might just get better, or you have seizures and they kind of quiet down. When you're an adult. And then there's other things that start to pop up when you're a young adult that you didn't have a uh, issue with before. So those are kind of, you know, the main things that present a unique challenge in that transition period, at least in, in my experience. And obviously families and patients themselves are gonna have um, their thoughts on this too. 100%, and just like building, I think we we started to talk about this a little bit about like sort of um, the individual's emotional well wellbeing. Um, a lot of people with autism, especially in our audience, uh, talk a lot about like, you know, anxiety, depression, um, some of like the challenges they have to deal with. Like, how do you help patients and their families like handle both like the physical and also like the emotional aspect of these conditions? Yeah, so I'd say that's a big part of it. Um, and maybe for a lot of people, that's the main thing that they're coming to see doctors for. It's, you know, uh, behavioral uh, difficulties um, frustrations and challenges, you know, might not manifest the same way, right? They might not be able to necessarily deal with it in uh, uh, the way that uh, other people do. And then that'll manifest with, you know, anxiety, depression, behavioral changes. Certainly in autism specifically, probably neurodevelopmental disabilities in general, there's a higher rate of, I think, anxiety and depression. So sometimes I will try to help them with that um, from a medical perspective. So there are medicines, of course, and I'd say that's one tool, but but not, you know, that's not everything. Uh, and then trying to get them, if needed, to a psychiatrist or psychologist, um, trying to get therapies in place, trying to figure out what it is about the environment that is worsening it, that's causing maybe more stress, and trying to address that, whether that's the home environment, school, uh, whatever it is. So again, it's going to look different from kid to kid, but um, but we we do see that a lot, and um, and we need you know we need the help of good you know getting people into the mental health system, which is obviously a big challenge, especially if you have a developmental disability, because that closes a lot of doors to accessing mental health. I think, um, but we do our best as uh, kind of developmental neurologists. Uh, and often it's helpful to have psychiatry, psychology, and social work colleagues to help with that as well. Definitely. I mean, just wanted to say um, thank you so much, Dr. Hanawi, for coming on the podcast with us. Like, you're a, basically like a pioneer in treating children and adolescents with neurodevelopmental disabilities because you've dedicated your career to providing um, this care and like mentoring the next generation of physicians and researchers. Your efforts have made 
a real difference in these young patients' lives, and especially a lot of these adult patients' um, lives who are often pushed to the side by the medical system, and you're really helping them and their families find better ways to handle these challenges. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today on the podcast. And thank you for our listeners for helping us come up with some of these questions and for joining us here today. Thank you. Very kind words. And thank you for what you're doing as well.